I know you can find burgers everywhere, but if this is the only thing you end up getting at Colony, go for it because it is pretty good. It's the real deal. Food halls are becoming one of the trendiest food operations in the US. And if you live in Los Angeles, then you can expect to find some very exciting ones. From historic food halls to modern food halls, which has everything from American food to Armenian food, what an adventure. Hey there, this is Steve from Rockstar Eater, and in this episode, I'm gonna be giving you a big tour of the best and trendiest food halls in Los Angeles. Five different food halls, over 50 dishes, one mega episode. So if you have the time, be sure to stick all the way to the end of this episode because this is gonna be the biggest food hall in Los Angeles tour you're gonna to find anywhere on YouTube. And if you are new to this channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button as well as that notification bell because I post these food and travel videos weekly you don't wanna miss out on. So go ahead, do that right now. And with that being said, let's go to our first food hall. When you think of the oldest food hall, one comes to mind, Grand Central Market in downtown. It's been around since 1917 and is one of the biggest tourist attractions in LA. You'll find many kinds of foods in this food hall that it is almost impossible not to please everyone. Grand Central Market is the most popular food hall in Los Angeles. And especially if you are visiting Los Angeles for the first time, then you should not miss this destination. The Pastor Taco is extremely flavorful. That's one of the reasons why I like Pastor. So yeah, Pastor Tacos, definitely it's something to get here. But then keep in mind that they have pork tacos of all kinds. So of course you're gonna find carnitas as well, which is uh, very popular. Me personally, I think I like the pastor tacos better because I just like the fact that they cook it on that trumple so you can taste more of that smoky, crispy flavor and all the sauce they put on top of it. These are actually pretty big tacos. I know it's kind of expensive, but at least the size of the tacos are, you no, know, it's fairly big. So if you guys are not into pork for whatever reason, they got beef here. Mm hmm If you guys want the beef here, it's not bad. I mean, it's not the best I've ever had. Still, you get a lot of beef in there and definitely pack it in with a lot of the salsa. Now here's something I'm looking forward to, the birria. Yeah, that's pretty good. I think this one is definitely the sauciest one out of all of them. So the beauty is the one you have to go with if you like that soupy, uh, you know, juicy beef taco, which I always like. I mean, I think it's great. They have a lot of other things on the menu there. So you can go really go hardcore and eat like the tongue, the cheek, the brain, all that stuff. If you guys are into that, you're gonna have a blast here. But if you wanna kinda take it a little bit easy and have something that's easier to eat, then this sampler is the one you gotta get here. Grand Central Market, you're gonna find every kind of food here. No kidding, I mean, you'll see in just a bit as I show you some of the different cuisines that they have. I'm gonna switch gears, let's go American this time to try one of the best things you can have here. And since it's a burger place, they will have stuff like hamburger, cheeseburger. You can do a double, you can do a triple, and then you can add stuff like bacon and jalapeno along with your fries. This is truly a remarkable spot because For the Win actually was nominated in the 101 LA Times Best Restaurants. Yes, this spot, so you definitely know that this is one of the restaurants you gotta go to at Grand Central Market. Woo, look at that go. Highest quality Angus Chuck beef. It's as good as burgers can get here at Grand Central Market. And that is the Martin potato roll which is really good. I mean, these are one of my favorite kinds of buns to eat. And here is my all-American meal. We got the triple cheeseburger with bacon. Goes for $17.50. These patties are pretty big. I mean, they're very smashed, but they're very wide. And of course, you gotta get your french fries too, uh-huh. Some of these food stands has their own place to sit, like their own stalls, and some of them you just have to kind of find a common area to sit. But there are quite a bit of options. I mean, even outside you got nice view of Broadway. Okay, now I can see what all the hype is about. 
I mean, these burgers are so rich tasting. They're crispy. They're so soft. It's like your perfect smash burger. I've only had smash burger a few times in my life, but this one is definitely one of the tops. I didn't expect to find it here at Grand Central Market. This is so crazy. And these fries should be pretty good. I mean, they're fresh cut, so why not, right? This is really as good of a smash burger as it gets. Yeah, you, you definitely need to come here. Oh, I'm, I'm just gonna continue eating this. I'm gonna switch over to Italian now. Why don't we try some pizza at the spot called Olio Woodfire Pizzeria. I heard that this is a pretty killer spot at Grand Central Market. I think I'm gonna try the margarita because that is always something that I like. And specialty pizzas. I heard that the chicken meatball parmesan is very popular here. So yeah, I think I'm gonna get that. And if you're into salads, they do have a couple on the menu and they have veggies like Brussels sprouts. There's a reason why it is so good because the dough, the sauce, it's all fresh made every day. Really good Neapolitan pizza. And they even have the oven too with the wood fire. And I believe this one is the margarita. I can tell because of the fresh buffalo mozzarella and basil. Yes, I'm recognizing it. Wow, it smells so good. And in it goes. All right. Wow, and even the Brussels sprouts cook in this oven too. Oh, that's pretty awesome. Wow, there it is. Fresh made, steaming hot. Here are my two pizzas today, starting with the classic margarita pizza for $11. It does look uh, like a pretty classic margarita, but how does it taste like? I'll find out in just a bit. And then on this side, got uh, chicken meatball parmesan. This is a specialty pizza. This one looked pretty interesting too, the Brussels sprouts. I'm a very big Brussels sprout fan, so I'm gonna get it. Ooh, these Brussels sprouts are so hot, but they look so good. Oh, hot, hot. It appears that these Brussels sprouts have been cooked with olive oil in that wood-fired oven. So it does have that wood fire kind of slightly smoky taste which i think is great because it makes your vegetables taste really good and this looks like some pretty awesome pizza i mean look at that slice wow mm. oh okay this is a very good tasting pizza because it's light and it's not too heavy on the stomach mm. i mentioned that the dough tastes really good you see the way that it's cooked? That is like the perfect way to make pizza. This is one I'm gonna be discovering for the first time because you're not gonna find this in too many other spots. Mm. So this is more for if you like meats. That chicken meatball is extremely soft and there's the really fragrant smell of the basil, the cheese is fresh. I mean, the dough, the bread, top notch. You are safe here at Olio. This place makes some of the best food hall pizza I've had. I'm getting kind of full, so I think I'm gonna end it out with one more food spot. So there's like so many good ones you can eat at Grand Central Market. How about this one, sticky rice. All right, time to go Thai mode. See, the menu is up there. They have so many things from Pad Thai, Pad Siu. I think I'm gonna go with the Ga Yang, which is a Thai barbecue chicken with sticky rice, $16. Yep, you got the chicken, papaya salad, the sauce, and wrapped up to the left, sticky rice. Ooh, very hot. For this spot, I'm gonna kinda take it easy. That's why I just decided to get one thing. But I heard that this one is really the one to get, especially if you love barbecue chicken. Oh, well, it's really good. Juicy and moist. Thai barbecue chicken is like one of the best in seed in Thai cuisine. Mm. And look at this papaya salad that comes with it. Oh yeah, so you're gonna get your veggies as well. Mm-hmm. 
It's like a crunchy masterpiece. That salad is so incredibly refreshing. What I'm also excited to eat because I'm a rice person is a Siggy rice. Just have to peel it off just like that. Oh yeah, almost kind of like eating an onigiri in some ways, I guess. Mmm, mmm. Okay, I would definitely come back here again. So if you're looking for a really good Thai spot, I think this is the only one they have here. But man, their food is really solid. I heard customers love it, critics love it. They even have a uh, brick and mortar store somewhere in LA too. Which shows it's a popular place to be. On the other side of the spectrum, we have Topanga Social, which is LA's best new food hall. It is located in the Westfield Topanga Mall. This big and stylish food hall has over 25 food and drink options. So if you are in the Canoga Park area, then this is the food hall you must check out. But even if you are closer to downtown LA, then make the drive over because this is such a fun experience that it is definitely going to be worth it. And just to let you know, they do have these kiosk machines where you can ring in your order. It makes it very simple if you're tech savvy. And if you guys don't know about mini kebabs, it did not originate in Topanga Social. It actually came from Glendale, which is their original store. And that one is one of the highest rated Armenian kebab spots that you'll find in all of Los Angeles County. So yes, I have every reason to be excited to be here at mini kebab at this Topanga Social. I don't think I've seen a kebab grill like this before. I heard that it's made of ceramic. That's pretty cool. I like the color of that, you see? And in this shopping center, there's gonna be a lot of places to sit. So you don't have to worry about seating unless it becomes like a really big overflow. But during the weekdays, lunchtime, I don't think it's that bad. So here are some of the great things that you can order at Mini Kebabs. They got the chicken thighs. If you're a chicken fan, this is always a safe way to go. So it is a complete meal. So it has the chicken along with some of the bread and hummus, as well as your veggies like tomatoes, and I think that's a jalapeno. And if you're more of a beef type of person, yo oh yeah, they got this beef shish kebab, which is the flat meat. This looks really good. It also comes with some hummus, some veggies, and I gotta have my falafel. Oh yeah, these are fresh made falafels. And if you want hummus by itself, they do have it. Look at that. So this is like an Egyptian style chickpea hummus with olive oil and lemon spread inside. Wow, that looks amazing. Wow, that's really amazing flavor. I've never had a hummus that was so refreshing like this. I don't know how they make it, but it's just so good. It's like, it is definitely very runny, but it has amazing flavor. If you get the combo plates, you're gonna see the hummus in there. But if you want more hummus or you just wanna concentrate on it with the bread, then you can certainly do that. And like I said, everything is made to order here, so it's fresh. It is a little bit pricey, I do admit, but like I said, it's not your typical food court food. So this is gonna be quality stuff. Mm-hmm. Chicken is so juicy. Oh, that rice is good too. I think this is like a basmati rice. It has like a buttery flavor. I know this is only my first one here today, but if this turns out to be my favorite out of all of them, I wouldn't be surprised because these are really amazing kebabs. So you can get the chicken, or you can get the beef plate, or you can get the combo plate. Oh, that's good. And I heard that you're supposed to put it into this garlic sauce. This is really what makes it taste so good. Oh yeah. I mean, it tastes great on its own, you know, with that smoky flavor, but that garlic sauce, it's like takes it to a new level. You should be very excited to see mini kebab in here because this is just such great food. I think that oil dip really enhances the flavor of this. They give you the bread for a reason, so you can put it in here. Oh, you see that? And make it into like a little wrap. Mm, that works. Oh, this is really one of the most enjoyable Mediterranean foods I've had. 
really like anywhere. And the great thing about Topanga Social is you can find foods of all kinds. So now I'm gonna try something different. I'm gonna go Hawaiian style, I guess in some ways, with some poke. Oh yeah, always excited for this. See, what did I tell you? Simple menu. You can get small, which is two scoops, and go all the way to large, four scoops for $20. And those are your steps. And so it begins with the base, which you can get white rice, or you can get greens, like salad. All right, two sides, you see that? We got crab meat, we got egg, we got squid. And then your protein, you get salmon, spicy tuna, tofu, and scallop. Wow, that's interesting. With the large, you get four scoops, so you can get one of each or double up, so. And then here are all the sides that you can add on, which is like jalapeno, cucumber, let's see, pineapple, corn, some red onions. Wow, even more toppings. See, you got some sushi ginger, you got some green onions, and then you got the, your sauces you can mix in, which is like punzu, yuzu, wasabi, spicy mayo. Then ending it off with some furikake. You can also have black sesame seeds, crispy onion, garlic. Now you know me, since I love sushi, raw fish, I'm gonna get poke. Unfortunately, I was not able to get it here last time, but I'm so happy to be able to this time. So refreshing. And the good thing about this place is that for your sauces, you can mix it. So for mine, I got the spicy mayo and the wasabi soy sauce. You can get it individually or you can mix it and get this really, hopefully fantastic flavor. Oh, that's sweet. It's like a big piece of sweet egg omelet. Okay, this is the first time I think I've had scallop in a poke bowl. This is pretty interesting. Oh, that's good. I never expected that. Maybe I'll look out for scallops from now on if I see it as a choice. I can't say that this is the absolute best poke bowl I've had in my whole life, but if you need your poke fix, they got it here and it tastes good. And they have some selections here that I normally don't see in a poke bowl that I find quite enjoyable, like the scallops, for example. Really awesome. Seriously, you can spend all day here at Topanga Social. There's so many places that you can eat at. And this next one, I'm very excited about because I love fried chicken. Here at Jaybirds, which is kind of like, I guess the Nashville hot chicken style thing they got going on here. Looks like they got quite a bit on this menu. Okay, so they got your tenders, which I find in a lot of these chicken shops. And then the sandwiches, yeah, definitely gotta get that with some sides, right? And like I said, I have to stress this again, made to order. So you're gonna get some very fresh food at Topanga Social, and I definitely have to try this. Oh yeah, that's a chicken tender, you see that? Spice level, you can go anywhere from mild to very hot. Woo, look at that, is that oil? Yeah. Yeah, awesome. They have waffles on the menu and they are gonna fresh make it in the machine, which is always a plus. Oh yeah, two best sellers. I got the chicken and waffles, you got the two chicken strips. You can get it as spicy as you want. Bunch of fries underneath, let's see if I could, yep, right there, spicy fries, fresh made waffles with uh, the syrup. And then if you're in the mood for the sandwich, this is the chicken sandwich, which is a big piece of chicken breast in there with the coleslaw and the sauce and a whole bunch of fries. Mm, crispy. And what's very interesting about this one is that they're spicy fries. So you can make it like super spicy. You can put Reaper spicy if you wanted that spicy. Whoa. Yeah, not today. No Reaper for me today. But you can do that if you're really into it. Fresh made waffles and be sure to put a lot of that syrup on top of it. Wow, that is really delicious. Like a very fluffy and that syrup, you know, it just makes it taste good. Anytime you pour syrup over it, it's complete. Mmm. Even if this was just a waffle house, this is like very top grade waffles. But then I came for the fried chicken, so this obviously is the main attraction. Such a tender piece of chicken breast. And I heard that Jaybirds is not just here, but they have some locations around Los Angeles too. So if you're looking for Jaybirds that's 
closer to you, if you're not around here, then look it up online, see if there's one near you. That chicken breast inside is so thick. And I love the bun too. It's been buttered and toasted to perfection. It's like kind of a little bit crispy when you bite into it, which is exactly how you want it. My first time here at Jaybird's as well. It's pretty good, I'm enjoying it. If you guys like chicken sandwiches, it's delicious. Definitely get the waffles too, because wow, that's pretty good. You come to Topanga Social, you're gonna find your usuals like burgers and fried chicken sandwich, but then you're gonna find some really interesting shops like the Barada House, which specializes in Barada. You can go with either a bowl or a panini, or you can get both, okay. This is so interesting. I never had anything like this before. So the making of the bowl begins with the greens, very fresh. Okay, what is that? Faro. Faro, okay. And that right there is the prosciutto. Okay, cheese and prosciutto. It's definitely Italian inspired. So I got two of their most popular ones here, beginning with this bowl, which is the burrata and prosciutto, or prosciutto and burrata. It has your farro, cherry tomatoes, got arugula. Looks like a pretty healthy bowl to me. And I also got the spicy turkey burrata sandwich. Look at that. You see that spread that's on the bread? Spicy with some rapini vegetables, turkey, and the burrata itself. So I'm gonna be sure to get a little bit of everything, like the greens, the meat, and the cheese. So rich. Mm -hmm. I don't eat burrata cheese that often. I mean, I don't love it, but I don't dislike it either. I can appreciate it every once in a while if I get it. And I think this is one of the most unique ways that I've had burrata in my life, like in this salad bowl. Mm -hmm. I think this is by far been one of the biggest surprises here. I'm so glad I got it. So this is my second sandwich today. Completely different than the one I just had a moment ago at Jaybird's. Mm-hmm. Wow, it's so spicy. Oh, they weren't joking around when they said it was hot. Pretty much a turkey sandwich, but an Italian version of it with all that cheese in it. This is my type of turkey sandwich. I've never really been into the, you know, the basic American turkey sandwich. But if you can make it as gourmet, as like jazzed up like this one, I'm gonna be a big fan. First ever time having a burrata sandwich, I would totally get it again. Maybe next time I'll try another flavor, but this one is very good if you like spicy. So not every shop at Topanga Social is an eatery. You can go to some merchandise shops that sell stuff that you could take home and you can have at it in your kitchen, such as Truffle Brothers Market. As you can tell, they got truffle here. Right at the storefront, you're gonna see all the truffle choices. Like they got truffle sauce, which is very interesting. Even got truffle cream and you have white truffle oil, but then they also have black truffle oil. This is truly an artisan Italian market. They got a lot of great stuff here. You got your pasta, some wine, and even got this imported French and Italian cookies, chocolates, and desserts. I heard that these you're not gonna find in too many places. So yes, this is definitely a good place to shop. Okay, maybe I'll get the truffle sauce and this one, black truffle oil. And this one I heard is very good. It's actually a honey. Look at that truffle honey, isn't that crazy? All right, thank you so much. Thank yeah, thanks Josh. <laughs> Well, I'm getting pretty full, guys. I think I'm going to end it off with this last spot, which I heard a lot of great things about. It's one of the best, most popular coffee companies in Los Angeles, Mad Lab. They got one here at Topanga Social. How exciting. My first time here at Mad Lab, and maybe many of you guys will come for the first time too. The coffees to the left, they got all your traditional coffee selections, which you can get hot and cold, and you can get their specialty coffees too. And they got a huge selection of pastries here too. They got a lot of croissants, like they got plain croissant, guava, cream cheese. And look, they even got Pop-Tarts down here too. This is really a state-of-the-art espresso machine. Fancy, look at that. I heard this machine costs $16,000 or something like that. 
Ooh, ground coffee, okay. Uh, close enough. You even weigh it, that's pretty cool. If you guys want coffee, I think this is really the place you got to try because everything looks like the highest order here. The quality of the coffee, the machine, all the ingredients that they use, it's just really top notch. Two of the best sellers. The left one is the Dali Latte. That one I heard is super good. And if you want another best seller, the Dreamsicle, which you can get hot, but I decided to get ice. Mmm. Do I have a milk mustache? I don't know. Actually, I don't. This is so good. It's very foamy and it's... Okay, it's definitely sweet. I mean, I'm not a coffee expert. I just drink it if it tastes good. Okay, I like this one. It's a coffee with orange flavor, like orange and vanilla. It's like the most citrusy, fruity coffee I've had. So out of everything that I had today, I think some of my favorite ones, you know, I really like the mini kebab, the first one that I tried. I mean, I always like kebabs. And even that burrata house was quite a surprise. I mean, you know, you can't go wrong with most of the foods here because almost everything that I've tried here was really good. Definitely stop on by here to experience one of the hottest new attractions in Los Angeles County here at Topanga Social. And if you are into Asian food, you have to visit the International Food Court, which is in Koreatown Plaza in Koreatown. This food court has over a dozen food vendors selling authentic Korean food at a fairly affordable price. So if you are in Koreatown and you're in the mood for Korean food, then this is gonna be your ideal food tour spot. So one of the ones you definitely need to check out, especially if you like tonkatsu, is the tonkatsu house, yeah. I'm always a fan of this. As you guessed, their specialty here is the tonkatsu, which is breaded, fried chicken, pork, fish, whatever you want. And it looks like it's pretty reasonably priced too. That is their big one right there, the king pork cutlet for $13.70. And just to let you know that you can do these catering sizes too. Look at that, good for 10 people. For $100 or $60, you can get quite a bit for your next party. Look how creative this thing gets. You can even get pork and chips. I've never heard of that. Wow, that's definitely a fun twist on fish and chips, which they do have here, uh-huh, and even chicken and chip. Honestly, it's been such a while since I've eaten here that I don't even remember most of what I had here. And a lot of it, I think I'm gonna be trying for the first time, but it just shows you can have quite an adventure in this Korean food hall and it is super popular. There's a lot of people here during lunchtime and they have three hour free parking, so definitely have at it. This one is called the Boston Variety and there is quite a variety in there because you got the greens and you got the macaroni salad along with the rice. And then you have the fried fish, which I heard is Alaskan Pollock fish, very tasty. And that is the pork breaded katsu, very traditional. And that's the Hamburg, which is Asian style hamburger. You'll find it in Japanese cuisine too. And it comes with a side of more katsu sauce and that is like a corn soup. And this one is the biggest thing that's on their menu. So if you have a big appetite, go for this one. This is the King Pork Cutlet. And yes, their pork cutlet is their most popular thing here. So obviously I had to get it. I don't know about you guys, but I always like eating katsu. So I feel it's one of the safest things to get if you're in a food hall, you don't know what else you want to get amongst all the Korean food choices. I can already tell I like this place. That thing is so crispy. It's like very crispy, very thin as well. It's perfect. Mmm. For sure, this is something you definitely need to get here. It's so good. You know, I think I'm going to be coming back here a lot more often. I'm pretty sure I'm going to like this one too. I mean, how could you not? There's a little bit of everything here. I like this fish. That looks pretty amazing with all the sauce on it. Whoa, bro. That fish is on fire. I mean, I don't say it's spicy, but it's phenomenal. Fish inside is very tender. It's full of flavor and the breading. I cannot rave enough about how good this breading is. It is, yeah, it's pretty magical. This hamburg, uh, I found out, it's actually made of pork. 
So if you guys like pork, then you're gonna love this. It does like a hamburger. It's so soft. So you got the protein, you got the veggies, you got the carbs. It's like really a complete meal. Oh, even got some soup too. Already off to such a great start with that katsu, but it doesn't end there because there is a restaurant to the left of it called Awu Rim, which specializes in Korean style street food. So yes, you see quite a variety at this food court. That's the menu right there. And it looks like they have a blend between traditional Korean street foods and stuff that's more contemporary with some Japanese influences looks like too. Okay, very good. You see, they got the odang fish cake, how authentic. This time going street food mode, look at that. We got these fried rice cakes. This is called dokkochi, which is kind of spicy and looks pretty crispy as well. This is like my type of rice cake. We got some shrimp tempura as well. And then that one is calamari, which is all looking so good to me as well as some seaweed roll. And I think that has some noodles inside, but I'll find out in just a bit. Spicy rice cakes called dokboki, very popular in restaurants and street food. And this one is called odeng, which is fish cake with the broth, very popular street food. And then these I'm gonna take to go. Uh, these are some of the rolls. You got the assorted roll. And then you also have uh, this one as well, which is shrimp tempura roll. This one is packed with a lot of flavor. What I really admire about this one is that it's soft, but it's so crispy at the same time. It's sweet and it's pretty sour and it's pretty spicy too. It really is up to you whether you want to use your fingers or you want to use your fork to pick up the foods. Maybe with some of them using fingers might be easier. Mmm. Mmm. That's pretty awesome. Breaded, deep fried, it's so airy. The shrimp itself is very soft. What I'm equally excited to try is the calamari. It's so perfectly breaded and fried. Saltiness level is perfect. This is something you should definitely get here. If I came just for that, wow. I mean, I'd be having such a fun time just eating that. Mm, yeah, there is noodles in here. Looks like glass noodles. So as you can tell, they're very into fried foods here, but I mean, I, I don't mind because I really like it. And this one is also another knockout. Wow, this is actually a very good spot. And you cannot forget about the dokboki, which is most popular street food in Korea. Mm -hmm. it, that rice cake is cooked perfectly. Perfect chewiness, not too soft and not too hard either. I think the sauce is good too. It is a little bit spicy. <coughs> but not as spicy as it can possibly get because this thing can be really spicy. If you're eating so many spicy hot foods, you're gonna need to cool yourself down with some of this, right? Mmm. Oh, that is so refreshing. It's sweet and it has that rice taste. Uh, I can't quite describe what a shike tastes like. You just have to order it and experience it. But I think this is the first time I've seen it served or it's, it's almost like getting a drink at a boba store, something like that. This you gotta kinda be careful because it's very hot. This odeng with the soup. So feel good. Like on a very cold day, this could really warm up your soul, seriously. There's a big piece of fish cake, just like you would find when you're in Korea. So if you guys want to try a taste of Korea street food style, then yeah, this is the spot you gotta come to. Everything is just so well prepared, well made. Another spot that I'm discovering for the first time here. So now I'm gonna show you something a little different in Korean cuisine that is a little more challenging to eat, but it's definitely a very popular food to eat amongst Koreans. I'm gonna be trying some sundae at Seoul Sundae, which are blood sausages. So it looks like they have sundaes of all kinds here. If you want to get their most popular one, it's number five, which is the sundae jonsig, which is 
uh, sundae platter looks like. But then you can also have sundae in these soups too. And they got some really nice pancakes. You see, look how different this one looks. Uh, you got a lot of Korean foods that you can eat here. This is the bimde dok, which is a mung bean pancake. Very healthy, very traditional Korean food. And this one is called the Budichige, which is Korean army stew. That's what they call it in English. And this is a popular Korean wartime food, which is composed of noodles. And you got your, I think that might be spam inside, some veggies, a lot of awesome stuff. And here is their main attraction, the sundae. Have you guys had this before? So these are blood sausages. You heard that right, blood sausages. That has noodles, it has veggies inside, and it comes with uh, looks like some pig ears and uh, beef tongue, I think. And with your meal, it looks like it does come with some banchan side dishes. You got your kimchi, which is a staple. Uh huh. Got to have that. Your acorn jelly, and then you even got your zucchini. I am really giving you an education on Korean food here because I'm showing you a lot of the different kinds of Korean foods that you can eat here in this food hall, such as this mung bean pancake. Mmm. Flavor is perfect and texture is perfect. It's so incredibly crispy. And you definitely need to dip it into the sauce because that's what gives it a lot of flavor. So it's pretty much just like in a restaurant. A lot of these foods is made to order. And price-wise, I mean, it's not exactly cheapies, but it's not terribly expensive either. You know, it's like food court pricing these days in LA. What else can I say? Ooh. Oh, that's a soup right there. It's a little bit spicy. So just giving you a little heads up, but man, it is rocking. Almost kind of tastes like a sundavu type of, uh, you know, that soup broth. That's like a ramen, you got your meat in there, everything. Mm. In the past, I've had these Korean army stews before where it was so big that one person can't quite eat it all. But this one is perfect for one person. Really a complete meal. And did I tell you that there's spam in here as well? Mmm. So here's the thing that this place is known for, the sundae. So yes, you put a little bit of that shrimp sauce paste over it. Mmm. Tastes just like a rice roll. When you eat it, you don't really taste that, you know, that blood taste. It's actually very clean tasting. It's very chewy too, almost like eating a mochi. Then you got all these other things in here, like the beef tongue right there, you see that? Mmm, that one's pretty good. Oh, I'm really liking that one a lot. It's so soft, I love it. This is another one of the really popular spots in this Koreatown Plaza. So there are non-Korean foods that you can eat at in this food hall such as LOL, which specializes in sushi. And sushi is actually very popular amongst Koreans. Since this is a sushi spot, they got a lot of the sushi, obviously. Everything from California rolls to Philly roll. And if you want noodles, as well as the bowls, looks like they got some good selections. Okay, even some bento, as well as some fancy rolls, just like out of a sushi restaurant. And these look pretty good. If you want a combo, you see you could get like a tempura combo with California roll for 16. Udon, California, 13, good stuff. So excited for this one. You see, we got the mixed tempura. Look at that, you got a little bit of everything too. Got some shrimp, broccoli, onions, uh, potato, tempura sauce. And I had to get one of the bento boxes. So this is the unagi bento, which is freshwater eel because I'm the biggest fan of this. That obviously is the fresh water eel with sesame seeds over the rice. And it does come with the eel sauce. So you just kind of like pour it on just like that. Oh yeah. And that right there is California roll. Got some salad and that is uh, fried uh, wonton and egg roll. So it comes with miso soup on the side. Yes, the whole experience. Oh, super crunchy. So yeah, they have meals that are just tempura. So if you just want to have at it with tempura, it comes with the soup and you're all good to go. 
Mmm. Oh, that soup is good. Always love miso soup. I mean, don't you guys agree? Mmm. Okay, that works. I love that eel sauce because it's sweet, a little bit gooey. I feel I could eat eel over rice every single day. I'm not kidding you. I, I really think I could. Phenomenal. Mm. Typical tasting California roll. I don't mean that in a bad way. I'm just saying that there's nothing very unusually inventive about it. Just like really good solid California roll. Now, of course, this is not going to taste like something out of a really nice sushi restaurant out in LA, but here in this food hall, you're going to get your sushi fix. And they have such a variety there. Lots of rolls. They even got appetizers like tempura and these really nice bento boxes. So yeah, another one of the popular restaurants here at the International Food Court. So definitely try it if you love Japanese food. Oh, I'm getting quite full. So I'm going to be ending out with this other spot called Cheese Tella which is the dessert spot here at International Food Court and they're known for these Taiwanese style cheesecakes. And the good thing about this place is that the menu is not that big, so it makes it very easy. So you got the cheese tella, which is very popular, chocotella if you want the chocolate, and they even have, yeah, those cheesecakes as well. So here are the two flavors I decided to get today. This is the famous cheese tella. And they call it that because there is all of this cheese you see kind of in the center. That is the Chocotella. Since I like chocolate, I'm going to get this one. Uh-huh. And it's worth noting that they tell you exactly how to keep this in the best condition for the best taste. You see, finish it within 12 hours, but then if you have leftovers, those are the instructions. I suppose you can use a fork to break this up, but look at that. I just had to show you. Isn't that pretty crazy? Mmm. Like a very nice sponge cake. Okay, I remember I've had this in the past before, but this has been a while, so I love it. You definitely need to try it. I mean, look at that. Perfect sponge cake. See when you press it? See, just as impressive. Look at the chocolate one. Isn't that something? Uh-huh. Mmm. I mean, some people like the original cheese tella flavor, which I do like, but I'm really into chocolate, cocoa flavor. So this is definitely gonna be my first pick. So as you can tell, there's quite a lot that you can eat here in this Korean food hall. It's so different from each other, so that's why I can't really say what exactly is the absolute best thing here, because you have the tonkatsu, you have the sundae, you even have sushi here, and of course the cheese tella. So you're really gonna have an adventure here at this food court. If you are more on the west side near Santa Monica, then you cannot miss Colony Kitchen. Unlike the other food halls in this episode, Colony is a cloud kitchen, which means you order online or in person in a common waiting area. You have almost 25 kitchens to choose from. So here's another spot in LA you have to check out. This is one of the most gourmet food halls you're gonna find anywhere in this big city. So the first restaurant I'm gonna do here is a restaurant called Muay Thai, which specializes in Thai cuisine. Oh, you gotta have one of these. Thai foods is one of my favorite foods, so you bet I'm gonna try this. Oh yeah, here we go with the cooking. So he is making the beef propao, which is one of the best sellers at this restaurant. I mean, they only have a few things on the menu, so it makes it easy. Wow, Ooh, that's hot, hot, hot. I always get excited when I eat Thai food, no matter where it is, whether it's in a ghost kitchen or at a nice restaurant. Wow, look at these containers, so eco-friendly, very nice. So this is the beef krapao, which is uh, the best seller here, I think. Yeah, so this does come in chicken and pork as well, and you can adjust the level of spiciness. And what I like about this is that it comes with that egg on top. Oh yeah, and of course a lot of rice. And this is the chicken Penang curry. You could get it with the other proteins too, but I always think chicken goes good with curry. And this one has tomatoes, potatoes. I see that chili right there. Whole bunch of rice underneath. They have inside and they have this really nice patio area. And I heard that a lot of these restaurants stay open until nighttime. So it's not just a lunch spot. Yeah, you can come here for a dinner if you wanted to. Oh yeah, this looks fabulous. Mm. 
Oh yeah. I like the combination of the ground meat with the veggies. And then when you add an egg inside, it's so perfect. Oh, it's like you gotta have this one in it. Mm-hmm. Now it gives it like a creamy taste. So every time you get a krapao, if they don't put the egg on top of it, please request it because the egg with the jammy yolk makes all the difference in the taste, I'm telling you. This is definitely the most interesting chicken curry I've had in a Thai spot because usually the ones that I've had before are more, they use the chicken chunks, whether it's the chicken breast or the thigh. So this one is ground chicken, it looks like. All right, trying something new. Oh man. Uh, thai food always hits the spot. I love the flavor of that, the Penang curry. That's like a coconut milky flavor. And like I said, you could get it mild or you can get it very spicy. Uh, it's completely up to you. I'm kind of more of like a mild medium type of person because the Thai spicy is, can get really spicy. Oh yeah. But I feel that chicken curry is something that it's always a safe bet. It's like if you don't know what else to get, this is it. So this is the beef pad CU. Yeah, they got this one and the pad thai as well. So you got the rice noodles, we got the broccoli, and the beef itself, they use ground beef. I've never seen that before. They do have some condiments as well, such as chili, if you wanna kinda of spice it up just a little bit, which I think is a good idea. Comforting. So like I said, this is one of the most interesting pad CUs that I've eaten because they use ground beef. And I suppose if you get the chicken, they use ground chicken as well. But hey, the flavor itself is pretty on point. I love it. It's so good. Yeah, it tastes just like a pad CU. All right, I think I'm gonna go with main chick, hot chicken. Oh, I've always wanted to try this. I heard so many good things about this hot chicken place. So it's pretty simple. I mean, everything is like fried chicken, chicken tenders, and then you can get your combo. You can get chicken sandwiches, uh, yeah. So this one takes about 10 to 15 minutes. Remember, it's all made to order, so you're gonna get some pretty quality stuff here at Colony. It's like a sandal right there, and three chicken tenders and some of the house special sauce. And it comes with a lot of fries, lots of fries. I'm definitely gonna try the tenders first. Yeah, before trying the sandwich, maybe seeing what this itself tastes like. Oh wow, it's so good. It's very tender and very moist. And the sauce is pretty killer too, oh man. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's like creamy and it's kind of sweet too, interesting. Since they're french fries, you have to get to it or else they will get cold and stale. You don't want that, right? Wow, that's perfect. And it looks like they put some sort of a Cajun seasoning over it too. So there's definitely flavor. Even if you don't dip in the sauce, it tastes great by itself. Okay, and I heard a lot of good things about this one. This is their chicken sandwich. Oh yeah. That is an incredibly tasty chicken sandwich. I mean, I already knew what the chicken tenders are gonna taste like, but in this sandwich with the toasted bun, the coleslaw, the pickles, it works magically. I could seriously eat like three of these. It's that good. All right, why haven't I heard about this place before? Main Chick, it's actually a really good place. All right. Yeah, this is one you definitely need to try here. If you love fried chicken, especially the Nashville style hot chicken, you're safe here. This is definitely one of the much better Nashville style hot chickens that I've had in LA. And if you guys like burgers, they do have one spot here called Behold Burger. Oh yeah, every food court, food hall, ghost kitchen, gotta have a burger place, right? Oh yeah, so those are smash burgers and I heard that this is Wagyu beef. So this is not your typical ordinary fast food burger. This is quality. Yeah, look at that, they even toast the buns. Yes, yes, always a big plus. It's burger time, so I got the classic double. Yes, I'm a double type of person because I love a lot of meat in my burger. And you can get a combo or you can get the fries separately, but of course I had to get the combo. So it's bound to happen that when you're in a food hall tour, you're gonna be eating French fries once again with another dish. 
Oh, those are good fries. So hot and crispy, so you gotta be careful. It's like so hot. Well, it's different from the other one because it doesn't have the Cajun spice on it. More of like a simple salt type of seasoning, but still very classic. Look at that burger. So that is their house special sauce. It has so many ingredients in it, like a little bit of an Asian twist from what I heard. Oh, wow. That is incredibly juicy and rich tasting. I mean, after all, it is American Wagyu, so anything Wagyu, whether it's US or Japan, it's gonna taste better than your typical USDA grade. You could stuff it with lettuce, tomato, you know, just to give it more of that classic taste. But I think a lot of the meat and the bun, sauce, onion, pickle, very simple, so good. This is definitely a very good burger. So guys, this is Anthony. He's the owner of this spot. Watch out for him. All right, awesome burgers. Thank you. So this is the first time I've ever seen a ghost kitchen that serves Roman style pizza. I mean, Rome style pizza is not something you're gonna find too often in LA or Orange County, but they do have it here at Colony in West LA and they have so many flavors. You can have so many toppings on it. Ooh, they fresh cut their prosciutto, look at that. All right, that's definitely a big plus. It's a burrata cheese. Wow, if you love cheese pizza, this is the one you gotta get. And some pesto, yeah, sauce it up. And cherry tomatoes. Cherry tomatoes. Okay, balsamic glaze. That's definitely gonna add a nice flavor to this. So not one, but two pizzas. Oh yeah, so this is the Amori pesto which is burrata, pesto, and cherry tomato pizza. So yeah, you do have the buffalo milk cheese, mozzarella, uh, pesto, and this one I heard is also pretty rocking. This is the crudo, which is the prosciutto and burrata. So pretty self-explanatory. You got the burrata, mozzarella, and you got the 20 month aged prosciutto, arugula, and uh, no tomato sauce on this one. It smells good and it looks good. Okay, I'm really glad I got this one. It's soft and it's crispy at the same time. And I really love that pesto flavor. It's almost like eating pesto pasta, but over pizza. I don't know if that's your pizza profile because I know there are people out there who are kind of picky eaters. You know, they're more into like just a regular cheese and pepperoni pizza. They do have it here, by the way. But just letting you know, definitely choose this restaurant because if you want to try something unique, oh, here it is, man. See, even more cheese, look at that. So this one has the prosciutto on it. Now that tastes like a pizza I've had out of an Italian restaurant. Prosciutto, arugula, some burrata, buffalo mozzarella, really as Italian as it can get. When you go to a lot of these food hall places, you're gonna get freshness and quality that matches a lot of what you would find in those pretty nice restaurants around LA. So just because it's in a food hall or a ghost kitchen, don't mean that it's fast food quality. This is definitely good stuff they're using. So when you come here, you're definitely gonna have a good time, even with the pizza. So while I'm at it, I also picked up some bread from Ginza Nishikawa. This I heard is a very popular Japanese bread shop. The bread sells out by afternoon time, so this is one of those things where you have to get pretty quickly because it is that popular. That's like a cult following from what I heard. Woo, look at that. Wow, that is a lot of bread. It's so fluffy. And I heard that this bread gets even sweeter and tastier the next day. So don't feel pressure to eat it all on the same day. I mean, it's always good to eat it on the spot, right? First time trying this one. Oh, it's like smooth and kind of spongy, silky. A little bit sweet too. I don't remember if I've ever had this kind of a bread before. When I went to Japan, never really had this, although you can find it in many parts of Japan. In a lot of cafes, you know, bread shops, sweet shops. So this bread loaf goes for about $18. Yeah, I do admit it is kind of steep, but then again, you don't find this in too many places. So you can eat it on the day that you get it, or you can eat it the next day. 
And if you go on the website, it'll tell you exactly how to eat it. Like you can even toast it too, add toppings on it. So yeah, you can have many uses for this. Sweets. Do they have any ice cream here? Oh, yes, they do. Look at that. Sweet Rose Creamery. See, they do it in scoops, 550, and then you can get it in pints as well. So many flavors, which one to choose. Bonito coffee, butter pecan, as well as cookies and cream. Some of my favorite flavors. Not gonna eat it all here. This is for later. Yeah, but at least I can try a little bit just to see what I'm getting myself into. It's like, you can never go wrong with coffee. You guys like coffee ice cream? Because I really do. So yeah, definitely make the trip out here. It's very close to Sawtelle, close to UCLA as well. You're gonna get some pretty diverse food here, many options to choose from. Though not as popular as Grand Central, you'll find another food hall in downtown called Corporation, which has about a dozen food and drink shops inside. It's one of the smaller food halls in LA, but it certainly packs a punch with diverse cuisines to choose from. So if you have two days to spare to check out food hall options in the downtown LA area, then Corporation Food Hall is another one you should add to your list. I think I'm gonna start with the restaurant that's closest to the entrance here at Long Beach Tacos. If you guys like tacos, then this is the spot you gotta check out. After all, this is Los Angeles, the land of tacos. You see that? Handmade tortillas. You already know that you're at a good spot. They got street tacos, seafood tacos, even mole taco. And it looks like they also have burritos on the menu. So if you don't like tacos, get a burrito. Or perhaps you can get some nachos and quesadillas. But I'm gonna show you what everybody here gets. So apparently the three taco deal is very popular here. Or you could go with something like the three mahi mahi or shrimp if you're into seafood. And these are the choices for the meats. Carne asada, el pastor, carnitas, chorizo, all my favorites. And so it begins with all the meats. So I got the carne asada, the chorizo, and the uh, chicken. Ooh, even oiling up that tortilla and grilling it. That always makes it taste good. So once you place your order, that's when they're gonna start grilling it up, the meats, the tortillas. It's pretty high quality. So we're not talking about just, you know, everyday fast food. So this one, like I said, is the three taco deal. So you get three tacos of your choice of meat. And I got carne asada chicken, which is pollo, as well as chorizo. It's kind of hard to tell apart, but I'll figure it out in a bit. And all of this is for $12 plus tax and look, you get some guac and some chips on the side. Really complete meal. But if you are in the fish mood, you should get the three Mahi Mahi taco deal for $13. So it's Mahi Mahi tacos, you know, the fish. And it comes with, uh, let's see, on top is cilantro, onion, guac, red salsa, and also a side of chips. And a big plus about this food hall is that there seems to be plenty of seating inside as well as outside. And the parking, you know, it's downtown LA, so you're just gonna have to find it. It's about like 10 to $12 if you park in one of these lots, or you can do street parking. But I think it's worth it, especially if the food is pretty good, right? I think this is one of the lighter guacamoles that I've had. So it's not as salty or limey as the other ones that I've had before, which actually I prefer more, but you can always take the lemon and just really drench it in there to bring out more of that flavor in the guacamole. Oh, definitely. As much as I like those chips as snacks, you come here for the tacos. So yes, gotta eat this. So if you guys have not had chorizo before, especially in a taco, it's like minced sausage meat that is pretty spicy, almost like their version of hot links. But I think it's so good in a taco. I feel like if I don't know what else to put inside of a taco, it's either carne asada or it's chorizo. The chunks are nice and small. It's very juicy. It's like a very easy taco to eat. So if you love beef, then yeah, you should get it. Now the chicken taco, I don't usually get as much, but I heard it is pretty good here, so I'll give it a shot.
that chicken is so flavorful, even a little bit crispy too. So it looks like I got the perfect taco trio right here. And there's also this one too. So if you love your fish tacos, then you should get a taste of California with the Mahi Mahi tacos. Wow, that Mahi Mahi is so thick. It's almost like eating chicken in there. I admit these aren't the cheapest tacos you'll find in LA, but they're not super expensive either. Uh, it's reasonable, as you can see. They give you a complete meal. So yes, if you're in the mood for tacos, they got it here, they'll take care of you. All right guys, so this is Caesar right here. Look out for him. Uh, tell him you saw this video, he'll take really good care of you. And if you guys like Indian, they do actually have a restaurant here. This one called No Worries Curry, which is all the way at the end of the food hall. And I think this might actually be my first time having Indian food in a food hall here in LA. So that's a sample of their menu. Looks like most of it is $14.99, at least for the meat dishes. I heard their chicken tikka masala you can't go wrong with, chicken curry, even biryani. But then they are also vegetarian friendly. Look at these bowls. You could get stuff like sag paneer, which is spinach, uh, sag shana. I've had all these before at an Indian restaurant and they are so good. Oh, interesting. Even Indian fusion dishes, uh, like spaghetti-like dishes, uh, chow mein. So yes, some Chinese influences. Wow, even like uh, Indian street food. So even in food halls like this, you can see all the international influences where you can find foods like even Indian foods. And this is like really good authentic Indian food. So yes, you should be every reason to be excited if you are a foodie. So here are three of some of the best sellers. Chicken tikka masala for $14.99. You'll find these pretty much everywhere in Indian restaurants in LA and it's no different here. Everybody gets this one. And you also have the sag paneer, which is spinach that's pretty creamy. Looks like there's some onions on top. I love this dish. And this one is their chicken biryani. I've not seen a chicken biryani that looks like this. So this is very new to me. And the good thing about this restaurant is that it has its own counter. And there are a few of these food vendors that'll have its own counter so you can just sit there for your convenience. And uh, yeah, I'm so excited about all this Indian food that I'm about to eat. So look at this chicken tikka masala right there. It's definitely creamy. Kind of has like a tomato flavor. It's kind of sweet. This one I made about medium spicy so you can kind of taste the heat. And by the way, you can also get it with rice because you're going to need some rice, right? Mm. I feel that if I just ate the chicken tikka masala with the white rice, that's like one bowl, good enough meal for me. But I got to have my sag paneer too because this is something that I always get. And one of the things I do like about Indian cuisine is how flavorful even their veggie dishes are some of the best vegetable dishes you'll find in any cuisine. Seriously, I could just order all vegetable dishes here and probably be so happy. But then if you guys like your rice, this is kind of like their version of fried rice, the biryani with chicken. Wow, that is the most interesting tasting chicken biryani I've had in any restaurant. Well, first of all, the color, it's like so dark orange and it tastes kind of creamier and uh, spicier than other chicken biryanis that I've had. So if you guys are in this food hall and you love Indian food, good news, they have it here all the way in the back. All right guys, this is Jess Bar here at No Worries Curries. Thank you so much, man. Look out for him for some good, awesome Indian food here. I am gonna go back outside because this coffee shop is gonna close at 3 p.m. Reset Coffee, which I heard is a really excellent spot. So you definitely need to check the website because these restaurants have different hours. So as you can see, they have foods on the menu and it looks like these are kind of like breakfast foods. I heard their burrito is pretty good, avocado toast is pretty good. Uh, maybe I'll just get a drink since they're about to close. Yeah, I'm gonna get like a latte, ice latte for six bucks. So I decided to get mine caramel today, but hazelnut and vanilla are also very popular here. So if you add the flavoring in, it's about 75 cents more, 6.75. Wow, this would be so good in the morning time. Yeah, come here during the day, then you can also try the other breakfast items. Pretty good, all right. 
Yes, good coffee. You can see it right out here on Spring Street. All right, guys, this is David right here. Thank you so much, man. Really appreciate it. Got to check him out here at this coffee shop. Heading right back in because there is a burger shop I want to try right in front of me called Burger Shop. Yes, very all-American food they have here as well. How could you not have burgers, right? Wow, they have so many kinds of burgers on the menu. So you can get everything from the classic to the Toro Bravo, which I heard is one of the most popular ones here. And even like a birria burger. Now that's something I've never seen before. And this shop is also called Planted Burger because apparently they got a big selection of veggie burgers. Okay, so if you are a vegetarian, then this spot is very accommodating to you. Starts off by buttering those buns and grilling it. That's really important to making a good burger. On the menu, you're gonna find a lot of the classic burger choices that you find in a lot of burger restaurants in LA, but at the same time, you're gonna see a lot of other different stuff you've never seen before. So that in itself makes this restaurant pretty unique, like unlike any other burger restaurants I've been to. Now here are three of some of their best-selling sandwiches. This one, I think some of you guys can tell, is the Birria Burger, the LA Birria Burger. So inside is the hamburger patty. I don't know if you can see it, but then on top is the beef that you typically find in the birria tacos. And there's provolone cheese inside. And that right there is the consomme. And if you guys like chicken, they do have chicken sandwiches on the menu, like the sweet bird, which is this really huge piece of buttermilk fried chicken. They got a uh, Creole aioli pickles and it's all drenched in honey butter yes that's all that sauce that's all over the chicken this one is the toro bravo another one of their best sellers so this burger has provolone cheese as well as bacon pickles the patty has been cooked to about medium and you could also order some fries on the side they got regular fries as well as sweet potato fries and by the way, you can get a lot of great sauces here. Like you got the barbecue ranch sauce, their house Thousand Island dressing, and you know, ketchup if you want it. Let's try it. Fresh fries. You could get a classic cheeseburger on the menu, but I decided to get something pretty novel. Their Toro Bravo. Wow, that patty is so juicy. I taste so many things going on in here. You have the patty, the crunchiness of the bacon, and then the spiciness of that habanero aioli. Definitely one of my favorite things that I've had here so far today. Yeah, you gotta try this Toro Bravo burger. If you guys don't want the burgers, they do have chicken sandwiches on the menu, and look at this, this is quite a spectacle. You see how long that piece of buttermilk fried chicken breast is in here? That is pretty crazy, right? Mm. Wow, that's super good. Originally, I was gonna get the Nashville hot chicken, but when I heard how good this one is, it's like, wow, I, I knew I had to try it. It's not spicy at all. So if you guys don't like the spicy chicken, this is the one you gotta get. I mean, look how big that piece of chicken breast is. So amazing. And like I said, you can get a side of sweet potato fries if you want to complement this thing. It's sweet, so nice. Mm -mm -mm. I think it complements the sweetness of that honey butter. Okay, let's try this burger. Wow, it's so messy. Oh, wow. Bro, that is like one of the most amazing things I've ever tasted. This is like beef overload because you have the beef patty inside, which is already so good because it's so juicy and flavorful. But then you also have the juiciness of the shredded beef, the birria. Both combine in here to produce this really excellent feel-good taste along with some of that habanero aioli, adds a little spiciness to it. A really brilliant mix of American and Mexican food right here in this burger. I don't know if this is really what you're supposed to do, but at least with tacos, yeah, you just really dunk it into that consomme. Mm. Now that tastes like a French dip Mexican style. 
It totally works. I mean, you, you could already taste so many things in there. The juiciness from the burger, the consomme, the crispiness of the, the uh, buns. This is really like a near perfect burger. You have to come experience this. Yes, yes. I'm in the mood to try some boba and thankfully they do have it here at Timaru, which I think is like the closest thing to desserts you're gonna find here at Corporation Food Hall. So if you love teas and bobas, you are in luck. That is their signature menu and I heard their Maru milk is the way to go. So I'm gonna try that health specialty. But then the Kiwi Citrus Breeze, also very good from what I heard. So yes, why don't we try both? So the Kiwi Citrus begins with some of that green tea. Ooh, those are nice cups, okay. That is mango boba. I don't think I've had that before. Oh, lemon juice, okay. I, and orange syrup, okay, lemon juice, orange syrup, that's what creates the citrusy flavor, I assume. It goes right into that machine and it seals the top. Yeah, just like in a lot of boba stores. And there it is. All right, Annie, thank you so much. You. Yes, major props to her. The maru milk is not a milk tea. It's essentially milk, like a lot of milk with brown sugar, the boba, and some cheese foam on top. So I've had a version of this before somewhere. I can't remember. Mm. It's like so milky and so sweet at the same time. A little bit cheesy, I taste it. That's all the boba in my mouth. <laughs> wow, definitely good to have for after a meal. And you have to remember with these drinks, you have to shake it really well in order to get that even taste all around. Ooh, I like that one a lot. Maybe I'm just a fruit type of a person, but the flavor is pretty much like lemon, orange, kiwi, sweet boba all the way in the bottom. I would totally get this one again. And if you guys are in the mood for pasta, they do have it here behind me, Funkolo. They specialize in pasta dishes of all kinds. So I guess you can say this is your Italian spot at this food hall. Okay, this menu looks pretty simple, like salads, panini sandwiches, their pasta specials. But then if you wanna customize your pasta, you could do something like this. Step one, pick what kind of pasta you want. Step two, choose your sauce. And then step three, uh, three free veggie toppings. So that's the shrimp for the Penny Shrimp Cajun Pasta. Look how big that shrimp is. See, the tail is even on it. So once again, I wanna stress that this is not fast food. It's gonna take some time for some of these stands to cook your food. But once it comes out, it tastes pretty nice. You'll see. Two of their best-selling pastas, beginning with the Cajun Shrimp with Penny Pasta. It runs for $18. It has a lot of that cheese on top of it. Man, it smells so good, and it was grilled fresh. And the other best-seller is their Spaghetti Bolognese for $17. It looks good, smells good, I'm excited. Woo, it's so hot. You see, it is so fresh. Wow, that penny pasta is so creamy and so cheesy. But then look at the shrimp, look how big it is. Wow, I mean that alone is worth the price of this thing, right? Yeah, you gotta be careful, that's a tell right there. Now the pasta, I think it could have been a little bit more al dente. I'm assuming that it's already kind of cooked on standby, but still a very good on the go meal, good for lunch time and maybe dinner time too. But this one is something I always like to eat, the spaghetti bolognese. Okay, that is definitely a bolognese. Now get some meat sauce with some of that tomato flavor. Lots of cheese on top. Pasta is not the first thing that I get when I go to a food hall because there's so many other options I wanna to get to. But if it is really popular, just like it is here, I'll definitely try it. All right, now this is something that's pretty interesting. It's their garlic bread, which is pieces of bread with like a pesto spread over it. Cheese, uh, balsamic vinaigrette. How could you say no to some garlic bread, right? 
<laughs> oh, it's tasty. I mean, you do want that balance of the crispy softness of the bread with that pasta. I mean, that's the way I always ate my pasta. You gotta have the bread and the pasta. All right, guys, so this is Caesar here at Foncolo. Look out for him, awesome guy, all right. Me personally, I think my favorite one out of all of them was that burger shop because the flavors were really unexpected to me. But then again, it's just kind of like, you know, your taste, your preference, because they have different foods going on here. So yes, come here, get what I got at these food stands and you'll be good to go. Well, there you have it with the best and trendiest food halls in Los Angeles. Have you been to any of these food halls? Which one would you most recommend? Drop it in that comment section because I would love to hear your suggestions and your stories. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed and I'll see you all in the next food adventure.